So this is my go-to machine now in the shop for anything that's quarter inch thick or heavier. This will be the, sh the machine that gets it done. This morning we're going to be uh, opening our new 355 Millermatic Pulse machine. So uh, this is the accessory box. We're going to start with the accessory box this morning and then we're going to move on to the actual machine which is in this box back here. Thank you KMS Tools for ordering this in for me and thank you Miller for uh, putting me in the front row of your deliveries. Well, let's get started. Got our wheels. This is a little different than I remember. So this one comes with a tool kit. So this is a snap out tool kit. You can put all your accessories and stuff underneath there. The rear dolly cart that comes with the screws and uh, it's pretty straightforward. There's just really four bolts that line up the cart. The handle lines up in the back here with this extra little trolley and it actually works as a stiffener as well. So it's a kind of a two purpose piece squeezes into place and um, comes with six bolts to put this together. There's uh, some butterfly nuts with uh, little pieces of little brackets that are going to hook into the welding machine so it's just easier to take these off and have them out of the way. Rather than bend or strip threads I'll just pull them off. Here we probably have some gas regulators for the bottle. So this comes with your welder when you get it. It's a brand new set of regulators for your welding gas. So on the top of the box, we got a brand new whip. So it comes with a pretty heavy duty Bernard welding gun. So this is a commercial application gun. This isn't your typical home hobbyist gun. This is more of a commercial gun. Larger cups, deeper, um, thicker copper in the cups to absorb heat. Comes with tools to change the liner came with some tips too, so we got some tips to get started. These are great guns, I've used these for years. Uh, it's kind of been a standard, and they're great guns, the low maintenance, and you change the liner once in a while, and uh, they're a nice gun to work with. So. so in the top of our box, they give us our instruction booklet, manual. Um, in the package came a sheet metal gauge, and that will give us from, uh, you know, light gauge, probably 20 gauge, all the way up to quarter inch, which is kind of nice to have. Yep and we'll put it up on the table. Holy beast. And there we go, there's our brand new Miller. I'm like so excited for this machine. This machine allows me to do the heavy stuff, so I'm really excited about that. So these machines, uh, generally, depending on how you're wiring them, some people will wire them into their shop. These machines will work on single phase and they will work on three phase. So you got the four wires instead of just three. Um, doesn't come with a plug because all plugs are different if you're running a um, a three-phase system versus a single phase, it'll be wired differently. And um, three-phase, I recommend if you have three-phase to run these on three-phase, you'll get the most out of your welder, but they work great on single phase and if all you got is single phase, then just wire your plug for single phase and you'll be good to go. So a nice thing about the Millermatic uh, 355, you've got your room for your large full-size spool, so you can put a 40-pound spool on there, the big ones. And um, what I like about these machines is that you have twin rollers. So you have twin drives in this machine. So you've got, uh, you know, the smaller machines, they all have a single drive. And I prefer a machine uh, that has uh, dual drives. So um, it's easier on the wire. You don't get as much marking on the wire, which actually controls um, a, a bunch of things. It, it stops your liner from being worn out fast, gives you a little more uh, arc and speed control. And, um, and less binding in the wire and stuff. So they're really great um, and it's nice to have. And of course, each roller is set up with multiple grooves to run anything from a, an 030 generally is a small wire for these machines all the way up to an 045 um, flux cord wire you can run in these machines as well. So straight down through. And then we'll just slide it back. There. It actually kind of feels like it locks right down into the cart. So we just have to put these on. So inside, there's a little uh, zap strap holding the ground.
The nice thing about this machine, it's a pulse machine, and when you're welding aluminum, having a spool gun is a great tool to uh, extend your welding reach. Um, you can do a push-pull out of the machine, um, but you can also do a push-pull gun or even just a pull gun like I have. It has a nice little uh, location for your five pound spool or two and a half pound spool that fits in these things. Um, typically, you're gonna run a, a fairly small wire like an 023 up to, I think these will go all the way to like an 035. Um, and, um, and the nice thing about this is it gives you the wire feed, but you can, you can wire feed pulse and you can set this up to pulse. Uh, what's the benefit for using this opposed to just the one in there for steel wire? Because you can't run steel in there, can you? Or can you, you? You probably can. I mean, it's not practical. It's usually used for um, aluminum as your typical. And aluminum. And yeah. stainless or not? And so the reason why you want to use a spool gun for aluminum yeah. is aluminum, uh, especially the smaller wires, are really soft. And um, when they're going through the friction of the liner inside the welder, uh, that, that soft, thin material will want to um, kink. And, and if you have... Uh, a long gun like this one and all that soft wire going through that distance, chances are it's going to build up pressure. It's a soft material right. too, so it's prone to um, chafing inside the liner. Yeah. And then as it gets friction and gets kind of stuck in the liner, it'll back up on your rollers and then, you got and then you've nest. got a big rat's nest inside yeah. your welding machine. So they've uh, come out with these obviously a long time ago and it's a nice short little distance for your wire to travel. And um, you know, you get the weight of a, of a full spool on here, but I've, I've used these for stainless as well. Um, but the whole purpose of these machines is because the wire is really soft and flexible yeah. and this, uh, this stops from kinking basically. Right. So for now, we'll just put this out of the way and yeah, then we'll uh, lift that machine up here. So inside here, You've got uh, some basic charts, parameters. Um, this machine's all digital, of course. It's a modern machine. You can change your uh, wire feed speed and your amperage, but on top of that, this is a pulse machine and it has a lot of uh, very modern features and electronics in it. You can control pulses. Um, as your wire is coming out, you can control the pulse of heat. So you're gonna control um, the background amperage of your weld. So when you've got a weld puddle going, you can uh, add more heat and take it out, add more heat and take it out, and it's also going to assist with those nice little dime uh, weld stacks that everybody's always looking for. So that's one of the nice features of this machine. Um, it's a great machine for steel as well. Generally, I don't find the pulse feature needed as much for steel as you would for aluminum or, or um, even stainless, working with stainless. But um, here it's going to give you your basic parameters, how to set things up. It, you can control your gas, your post flow, your pre flow of your gas ahead of your weld puddle. Um, you can uh, dial in your spray transfer, your globular transfer of your welding wire. And, um, and it's, it's just, you know, it gives you, the, you can run this, uh, this cable here can be reversed. So you can run reverse polarity on solid wires and stuff like that. Or you can go to, um, uh, uh, you can go to positive and you can go to reverse. So right here, you just change your ground cable and swap these and uh, it's pretty straightforward. So for running uh, MIG welding, when would you use the uh, other polarity? Like, cause you normally run reverse, right? Right, so positive. Yeah. Positive, you're yeah. You're gonna run positive for like solid wire. Solid wire, okay. And then you're gonna run uh, negative for like flux core. Flux core. And if you're good. running a flux core with a gas, yeah. then you're gonna go back to positive, so. Oh, okay. So the ground, has a little keyway. The keyway goes in and then locks into place. That way it's not gonna slip out on you when you're using it. And they generally lock into place for good. For me, when I'm running these machines, I, I'm not switching, I don't use flux core. So I'm pretty much running electro positive all the time. Yeah, so this is a heavy duty Bernard gun. This is uh, designed for high amperage. Um, you know, you can run some you can, you can weld like two inch plate with like nice hot passes with this. You can run flux core, which is usually used for heavier welding. Um, and um, the reason uh, some people might not know why flux core works as good as it does is it, it gives you a protective shield over the wire. It works in uh, windy areas, but it also, another reason that people don't think about is when you're working with heavy metal, um, thick metal, um, you have a lot of heat melting that thick metal and you have a larger weld puddle. And that weld puddle, um, if it's just protected by gas, 
sometimes has a longer cool rate than a smaller, thinner piece of metal that would uh, cool off real quick. With a big, heavy piece of plate, that metal is going to retain the heat and it's going to have a longer life in the, in the liquid weld puddle. And that puddle is more prone to contamination with oxygen. So the reason behind the flux is the flux is going to create, uh, it's going to cool quick and it's going to create that protective shield over the puddle. And flux wire will always give you that slag when you're finished, right? It is. Opposed yeah. to the other yeah. ones. Yeah. And so one of the tricks too is, uh, you know, when you're dialing in your temperature and you're working with these uh, flux cord wires, is your ideal temperature setting and your ideal fill rate is when your flux is going to start flaking off or sometimes it'll even curl up behind your weld puddle and as it cools it'll just it'll just uh, basically fall right off and um, if you're dialed in and you know your settings are good you'll see that flux just curl up and fall off behind your weld and leave you a nice clean beautiful shiny weld in behind it so this is the um, tip of the welding torch here. I'll get you to hold that end. And um, on here we have a couple of O-rings and um, gas inlets. So when you slide your welder in, it's going to lock in place under this roller. In front of this roller you can see the little wing nut here. So that's going to go in behind this. There's like a kind of a, a groove carved into the brass here and that's going to lock that welder into place. It lines up the liner. It lines up the liner inside the um, welding gun and, uh, and your wire is going to come off the top of the roll. It's going to come down through the two rollers and then into this and um, this is your power. So this is going to uh, transfer the uh, power to the tip. So up inside, um, for those that aren't as familiar with these machines, you have your gas lens. This is your cup and it's usually copper to um, it uh, does two things. One is it directs the gas over your weld, uh, but it also is made out of copper to stop the slag and the weld splatter from sticking. Now over time it starts to stick, but for the first while with a new cup you won't get any splatter sticking to your cup. Inside here is a contact tip. Now this contact tip, um, this is going to come in a variety of sizes. Uh, the whole size is based on the wire size. So you might start with uh, an 030 and that wire hole, that hole inside the copper tip will be a little smaller to connect to the wire. Um, if you're up to a 040, uh, even a flex core, something like that, this hole will be much larger to allow, to allow the larger wire to go through. So um, inside here, the wire comes through the gun with the pull of the trigger. This will send the trigger signal to the machine and trigger the rollers to pull the wire through the, push the wire through the gun and um, pretty straightforward. You just pull the trigger and out comes the wire and off you go. So these are, these are changeable. Um, these are changeable, of course, um, if you get splatter and these start to get uh, tight over time. If you're working with really hot welds, these will tighten up. They'll kind of shrink over the hot and cool process um, and uh, they'll start binding your wire up a little bit. So if you start getting a sticky wire and it doesn't want to come out nice and smooth, change out your tip and you should be good to go. What size did the machine come with contact tip and rollers? Um, well, these rollers are all interchangeable. So okay. these little dials, um, you can undo that. And swap it around, it, it's right? A, yeah, and you can swap your roller to uh, a larger or smaller wire depending on, usually they're set up for a standard like an 035 yeah. when you get it. And um, yeah. So, so these rollers have two sizes, right? These rollers probably have Two or three sizes. Sometimes one size will fit several different wires. Oh, okay. So these are, yes, you, you're right. These are twin rollers. So these will do, usually it says right on them. Usually like 035 and 04? Yeah. Oh, okay, that's 045. Yeah, and 035. So those are So it'll sizes. go from probably 035 or 030 maybe even all the way up to uh, an 045. Oh, so. and you don't even have to adjust them or anything. It'll do that on it. Yeah, you just swap them around. This is what you'll set the tension on your wire. So if you have a larger wire in there, you want to back this off. Yeah. If you have a tighter wire, smaller wire, you want to add a little more tension to it. But these, ro these rollers will actually groove the wire. So you don't want to put so much tension on the wire that you're actually making little grooves in your wire. Because if it's pushing the wire through and grooving it, yeah. that groove will actually work like a, will work like a, like a saw almost inside your gun and it will groove. Sometimes these liners are um, metal, but sometimes they're Teflon. And especially in the Teflon liners, um, you'll actually see the Teflon 
um, getting worn out and binding up behind your tip inside your welding gun. And then you'll start getting uh, wire travel problems going through your gun, right? Okay, hold the gun for a sec. Absolutely. We're just gonna back this off and slide the gun into position. Now, usually you want this piece down is usually how it goes. And you wanna line up your gas lenses up inside here, there'll be a little port inside there where the gas from the shielding gas is funneled through the machine um, using a pressure regulated pump. And, um, and you wanna line that up to make sure that gas is getting all the way up your machine to the top. So all the way up, it's gonna be about an eighth of an inch off the roller and, um, and then just lock it down. So that's it, pretty simple. Now you've got your uh, power cord that you wanna run through the bottom inside of here and it's only gonna go on one way. And once you feel it slip in, you just snug it up and you're good to go. And that's to initiate the rolling, right? Hmm? Like that. That's your trigger. That's, so that's the that's trigger, power yeah. to your trigger and that's the on off on for your off. trigger. Yeah. yeah, all right. And where does the gas plug into to this one? Well, the gas is internal. Oh, it is? So okay. when your bottle is put on, yeah. there's a... Oh. a Right, right there, yeah, yeah. So your gas is gonna get plumbed into there. Yeah. So I've been asked why I would go with a machine uh, like a 355 Miller, which is a, a, a really, it's a premium machine and, and quite an expensive, one of their more expensive machines that you can buy. This one is a 355 amp and uh, is capable of easily welding two inch thick steel material. Um, so it's got the power that I needed. My other machines are only 211s. Uh, they're great for sheet metal and maybe uh, plate up to quarter inch. I wanted to work with Pulse a lot more. Um, it's more proficient. Um, I can get more production done with it. And, uh, and it's a heavy duty machine. Um, going on 30 years, I've worked with Miller machines. I've worked with other machines in the industry. And um, Miller has always been the reliable go-to machine if you want um, you know, maintenance done, um, anything that goes wrong. They're uh, quick on the ball of getting it looked after picking it up, dropping it off, um, taking care of your machine. And so that's a, a peace of mind that I really like working with Miller. And um, you know, I've worked with other machines. I've been in the industry for a long time. I've worked in all kinds of industries, uh, mining, um, commercial uh, construction, um, brewery equipment, shipbuilding. I've done a little bit of everything and I've worked with all the machines and brands that are out there. And, and I'll tell you, it makes a difference when you're working with a Miller uh, for the quality. So it, it's not all about the electronics because, you know, things are changing with welders so fast. Every month or every six months, there's new electronics becoming available that um, allow you to weld better. And, um, and so, you know, the electronics are great for um, setting up your, your, your weld parameters and doing, uh, making the wire transfer into your weld really great. Those are all great features. But at the same time, it's about having a machine that has good parts, and that makes a big difference. These have real quality uh, motors in them. They have quality fans and cooling systems. They have quality electronics in them. Um, some of the other machines and competitors might have a single drive wheel where these come with two really heavy duty drive wheels for your wire. Um, you know, they have a really good cooling cycle in them um, and just reliability. You know, like I said, my last machine was still going strong when I sold my shop and I had had it probably over 12 years and, and a lot of heavy industrial, uh, heavy plate use on that machine. And uh, I loved it, never had a problem with it and was looking forward to um, this one arriving because this is their new version of that machine. It's got a little bit more modern electronics in it. Um, it's gone up a little bit in amperage um, and uh, I can't wait to start using it. Thanks for watching the guys and um, Check out some further episodes that we're gonna do on this machine. So I'm gonna be putting this machine together in, in the future here. We gotta buy a plug and, um, and get it all set up, finish setting it up, showing you how we set it up. And then I'm going to uh, change out the whip and we're gonna put the spool gun on it. And uh, I'll show you how to operate and how to set up the spool gun. And then we'll do some demonstrations with Pulse and uh, we'll set up some aluminum coupons. And uh, we'll show our apprentice here how to set up coupons and how to prep them and how to prep a clean welding joint for aluminum so you get those nice, clean, glassy welds. And, uh, and we'll go from there.